about playing on Friday, and then we'll open up for questions. Uh, man, I'm happy to be here with my teammates. Uh, we're we enjoying our time here at the Cotton Bowl, and we're just getting better, you know, as the week come, preparing for the game, and we're going to take it day by day, you know, enjoy our time here, but also we're going to get that work in. Our first question comes from Joey Blackwell. Uh, hey, Phil, you know, you, you kind of held things together on the defensive uh, front for Alabama this year, and Jordan Battles kind of held things together in the secondary. But how has Henry Toto kind of held everything together in the middle of the defense as kind of the on-the-field signal caller for you guys? Uh, Henry, uh, you know, he, he liked the captain of the ship. So, you know, if, if we don't get no call from him, <laughs> he'd probably be asked. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, we out we out of place, so we out, we all out of place. So, um so, you know, once he give our call, you know, he, he, he give him the signal out in the call and and we get the rolling from him. So he, he play a big role in his uh, in his defense. And he he's a great leader. Uh, got a great mentality of, of football. You know, I love him to death. I'm glad he transferred here. You talk about a guy like Henry and also with Jordan, what does it mean having guys that you know are confident in the system that you go to battle with every day? Oh, it, it feels great, you know. It shows that, you know, we ain't got nothing to worry well, I don't have nothing to worry about knowing that I got those guys going to ride behind me. Uh, those guys come to work every day just like me. Uh, and we, we do a great job of picking everybody up on the defense. Uh, you know, we try to lead by example and also with our, with our mouth. So I'm, I'm happy to have those guys in my circle, including a lot of more guys on the defense. Next question comes from Zachary Brazilier. Phil, what, what do you remember the most about Jerome Ford and kind of how do you think he's improved just watching film? Uh, you know, I feel like Jerome has improved a lot, uh, but it doesn't surprise me because he, he's always been a hard runner and he's always been, a you know, a great football player, you know, just being here as a, his freshman year and like that. So, you know, he's always been a great guy to be around. He's real cool. And I'm gonna be I'm happy to go up against him, you know, on a on a different sides. Next question from Skyler Dixon. What's it like going up against I don't know how frequently you've played against a guy that you were teammates with or whatever, and I guess in the transfer portal era, there's a lot more of that, but what will it be like to be in, in a game like that against somebody that was a teammate? Different or not that different? Uh, I don't think it's different. I mean, because for me, you know, we I practice against Jerome in, you know, spring and, and fall camp, so I'm pretty familiar, you know, just playing against him, but, you know, by him being on a different team, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, once once you, you know, you family, you family. And, uh, you know, but we going to war. So, you know, after the game, I see him, you know, I win or lose, you know, hug and dap him up. That's still my family. And I always remember him as one of my brothers. Next question from John Talty. That's great. Hey, Phil. Uh, uh, guys, before you talked about how the Texas A&M loss was, you know, a turning point for this season. Was there a specific moment or you know a time where you could tell that like the team was different, that like the switch had been flipped? Most definitely, I feel like you know Texas A&M was a turning point. Uh, it showed a lot of guys, you know, you know how, how I feel to lose, and you know how I feel to be down. So we got the experience early, so we know how I feel to be down and out the world, you know, against you. So you don't want to feel like that no more. So, you know, we just took that as motivation and tried to get better every week. You know, we still had battles that we had to fight, but we overcame and we stuck together as a family and, and got through a lot of things. And I think that would make this team so strong that, you know, we fight together no matter what. Next question from Paolo Ugetti. Hey, Phil, uh, you talked about Jerome a little bit, but, you know, you guys also have some transfers on your side of the ball, on your side uh, that have helped you guys out the season. What's it like to see kind of the influence of the transfer portal on um, on your team, but also just on, on, on the game in general? 
uh, you know, I'm happy for my teammates, you know, that transferred in. Uh, those guys came in and they, they created a lot of value for, for themselves. And, and I'm just proud to say, you know, they, they're my teammates. And, you know, you know, no matter what, no matter what they go through, I'm going to always be here to support them, you know. That's, that's all I really have to say about that. Next question from Chris Benini. You guys really uh, took on the underdog role before that SEC championship game. It seemed to, to thrive in it. Um, how, how do you kind of approach this game? Um, being Obviously, being a favorite is not something you think about, but, but how do you try to find that same type of motivation to be the underdog? Uh, you know, it, I mean, I feel like we was the underdog right before that game. and um, But, you know, coming into this game, you know, we just got to have that mentality that, you know, this, it's a two-game season and everybody that we play, they're going to be good. You know, they're here for a reason. So we got to bring our best um, and just have that mentality that, you know, it's, it's win or lose or do or die. So you don't get no no redos in, in this. So it, it's, it's a two-game season or it can maybe be one. So we just got to have that, that mentality that, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go out here and do our job. Everybody play on the same on the same level. Everybody on the same page, and who is all about whoever wanted the, the most. Question again from John Talty. Hey, Phil. Uh, Coach Saban talks about how important player leadership is, and you know how it can make his job a lot easier. How have you seen this team's you know player leadership evolve over the course of the season? You know, the team leadership. I think it it, do, it does play a big role because you know some players you know they they can I mean they I feel like they understand it better when it's coming from their own peers and you know not coach just not coach so I, I feel like he is right about that you know when when players hear hear stuff from come from us they will understand that all right we on the same they on the, they on, they got this main this mindset so we got to have this mindset also. Question from Joseph Hoyt. Hey, Phil, this is Joseph Hoyt from the Dallas Morning News. A lot of the talk with Jerome is the fact that he's been able to get opportunities at Cincinnati and kind of run with it. I guess in your experience as a defender at Alabama, you know, how deep and talented is this Alabama running back field year in and year out? And I guess how competitive and hard is it to earn opportunities in a backfield with so much talent? You know, like I say, man, Jerome always been a, a great runner. And, you know, he had to do what he had to do to, you know, to, he had to make his decision on what he wanted to do. And like I say, um, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for his success at Cincinnati. And like I say, I'm going to support him no matter what. That's still my brother. He just on a different side now. And, and we just going to be, you know, going to war with each other. Any final questions for Phil Mathis? Phil, thanks for joining us. Best of luck on Friday. All right, appreciate it. This concludes our media session for.